Okay, so I got my first two pieces in and this first one I went ahead and made it 27 inches. Uh, the very first one was a full piece. So this is 27, this is 12 and change. Now we want to just do like a staggered. This whole thing could be done with no seams, but we want it to look, you know, normal. So I'm putting seams in, even though it's only 40 inches long. All right, this guy here, let's do, um, we're going to do 16 inches for this one. So to cut this, you want to make, to measure this, you're going to make sure you um, remember what size you want to be in this waist area. And that's where you're going to be putting that cut. So if we want this piece next, this first piece here to be 16 inches long, we need to measure from the right side. So 16 inches. What that's going to be make is as I cut this piece, this is what's going to be there. Okay, I'm cutting it there, and we're going to use this piece. That's 16 inches. This tongue, you see that? That's going to be the connection for the next piece. So, if I cut off that side, it wouldn't work. <laughs> you got to cut off the uh, the side of which you're actually going to be putting in the waste area. So, um, this becomes waste. And you don't, you don't need much more than a couple of scores. I'm just going to push down right on that joint there. Okay, so remember that the piece always starts with the big tongue here. And as long as you can see that big tongue as you're doing it, you're going the right way. And everything should line up nicely. good and now we want to put that next piece in so to measure that just take our tape measure and go up to the baseboard or you know you could use this piece that's already there as a reference as long as you got the good spacing there so 23 and 1 8 23 and 1 8 now we don't want to cut this piece off that's going to be what connects here so we want to cut this end off. That's going to be what's going in to the um, underneath there. Okay, so 23 and 1 8 and we want to measure that from that part there. 23 and 1 8. just cut this notch out and the way I determine the notch is I just put the piece of wood up here just like this and basically I need to get by this doorway right so this casing what I need to do is um, slide it up here so that material is going to stay but then what's behind the wall there that has to go so slide it up and just slide down so you can kind of visualize where you need to to be um, your uh, stopping point here and the width here I mean you know I'm using width stopping points whatever basically you're just you're taking the, the um, area that you need to cut out and you're just kind of eyeballing it now this is a tricky one but it's not terrible because you can go underneath by sliding it this way but they don't slide that easily that's the only issue so if it slides nicely, then it's great. But if it's a pain, it's not great. Um, they just don't, uh, once they're in, they don't love to slide. So sometimes it's best to just start it a little ways away and kind of get a little momentum. And uh, once you have a little momentum, it's good. Better. But, so just grab a scrap piece and just tap it. Okay, so it's flush here, which is where it needs to be. I need to check my mark. All right, now um, 
in beating up that uh, piece, I ended up with a bunch of slivers. So I need to vacuum this area just to make sure it's clear. And uh, taking a little bit off is actually a little harder than you might think. You score it just the same. Uh, you got to use the um, pliers. Oh, here they are. And just crack the joint. Provided you scored it, it's good. The power miter box would be great, but it really uh, makes a lot of mess. So, a quick way to get rid of the uh, this backing is just to take your knife and cut right on that backing, and then get it. Okay, gonna start working on this now. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one on first because of this casing. It's going to be a lot easier to go this way than it is to have a piece here and drop it down because that casing is in the way. If you can envision the piece would be like that. And see what's going to happen when I go down. I'm going to hit the casing, right? So in order to avoid that, I'm going to drop the piece down and I'm going to slide it under. And then that's just going to make it a little easier for me to get this piece in. The only difference is because that tongue is supposed to be going on top. So I'm just going to have to put this in and get it in there. And then very carefully slide this piece in. And now I just gotta tap this, gotta be very careful not to hurt that joint there. So I'm just gonna give it a little tap. It doesn't take much. Just gotta get it under. So yeah, you can see how that goes under there. Now the next piece, this piece here, I'm going to have to do the same thing. Slide it under because it's going to go underneath that casing. Alright, now I can measure that. Okay, so this is where I'm going to have to lift this up to get it under that joint. That's got to go about another sixteenth of an inch to close this space in. Oh, you heard that click? That was it right there. Okay. This isn't the one, but if it was it, we would be coming down like that and pushing it under the casing, right? So, gotta cut this guy. I always like to kinda just stick it under just to make sure that it's got plenty of room. And it does. Okay, so now we can set that in there. And I can take my pencil and figure out where I want it to be. So we're going to cut that out. Now I'm going to come here and mind my mark. I want to be a one inch away. So that's going to be my marked cut. So I'm going to do that with the uh, jigsaw. And it's angled just because of the casing there. That's all. It doesn't have to be, probably, but I'm going to go ahead and just cut it at a little bit of an angle. See, when you have to slide these, it's a lot harder to, to get them underneath. Be very careful with this joint. So 
what that looks like. Got my layout line. see how nice that is boy this casing is just hammered oh. all right <clears throat> making our way out of the the um, hallway here and then just have a few more uh, pieces before this other casing so this I'm gonna make a full piece here uh, I haven't used a full piece for a while so I figure it's time to use it and, uh, eight inch piece right there forgot that was the piece we want. Okay. All right, now I'm going to measure that distance. 30 and 3 quarters. And we're going to measure from that tongue. 30 and 3 quarters. nails you think you have them all but it's just hard to see sometimes uh, let's make it uh, 12 inches all right so this one is going to go like this and again it's going to slide underneath there so we have to remove the material the same thing goes so again I just sight down from the casing. I want to go inside a little bit so it makes sure that it covers up the, the um, moldy or the flooring. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then for this part of the cut, I just take my piece and I just put it up here and flush it up against the piece where I want to stop it and then take it right here and I want to cut right that guy right there now as you do this you, you might find that there's stuff inside and that stuff might get in the way of um, giving you a, a good um, depth a deep inset but it should be okay As long as you cut the, um, the casings out relatively good, it should be pretty good. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and cut that out right there. I just put it on my Festool work box. I just love these things because of that grip that, that I have. It's uh, definitely a nice tool to have. And it is a tool. Great. Okay. 
So, perfect. 26 and we'll say 5 eighths. No, 26 and a half. All right, 26 and a half. And we want to make sure we keep the tongue on it. So I'm measuring with the tongue 26 and a half. So every other time I've done this flooring, I've done what's known as a, basically I've had the, um, uh, I, I use my boxes, my uh, work boxes, to raise up the uh, thing. I had my portable vacuum and, uh, what the heck, oh dude, that thing is completely short. Yeah, wow. 26 and 5 eighths, and I cut it at 25. Holy smokes. Yeah, that was a, uh, that was a mess up. But I'll be able to use that on another piece. So that won't go to waste. Oh man. Well, I'm going to tell you, I think I'm going to go grab my tool. A bar that you could put on this side because it's hard to get pressure from that side. And I can take it good like that and try to hit this with the uh, tool. And in doing that, I'm going to slide it over. Now it's got a um, cushion on the bottom. To not, um, you know, hurt the wood. Okay. That's <laughs> pretty easy. Okay, now this one's going to also be needed to be trimmed, I believe. Oh, yeah. So we got to go under that. So I need to measure the, the furthest distance. So I'm going to make this piece 22 inches. Let's see if we can utilize this. Now, you know what? I could totally do this after, but um, because of the, the casing, I'm actually farther than the casing. This is just the baseboard. So we can actually end up in front of the base. But um, yeah, um, I already marked it, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. All right, hit that with a jigsaw. All right. Give this a little tap. Um, uh, ten inches. and a half 
leaving the tongue. It's good right there. All right, time for a little break.